Welcome to the Invite Health Podcast, where our degreed healthcare professionals are excited to offer you the most important health and wellness information you need to make informed choices about your health. You can learn more about the products discussed in each of these episodes and all that Invite Health has to offer at www.invitehealth.com slash podcast. First time customers can use promo code podcast at checkout for an additional 15% off your first purchase. Let's get started. Today's episode discusses thyroid function because poor thyroid function equals fatigue and terrible health. So we're going to discuss nutrition for your thyroid gland. Now your thyroid gland is a small butterfly shaped gland that's located in your neck just below your larynx, your voice box. Your thyroid regulates the ability of your body to convert food into energy. Uh, Your body's energy use, your metabolic rate, the functioning of your heart, and your digestive system is all controlled by the thyroid. They're all affected by it. So is your body temperature, the development of the brain, and your IQ, your mood, your brain energy, uh, the formation of bone and muscle, and it does so much more. Now, your thyroid regulates these things by releasing thyroid hormones as needed in a very controlled fashion, a feedback fashion between the brain, an organ in the brain, and your thyroid gland. So your thyroid secretes uh, two hormones. They're called thyroid hormones, appropriately, and it releases these into your bloodstream, and they are then carried throughout your body. They're called T4 and T3, but of course, when it comes to science, it never ends there. Uh, There's other names always. T4 is also dubbed thyroxine. It's the hormone secreted in the larger quantity by your thyroid, but it's not as active as the other thyroid hormone, which is T3, or triiodothyronine. T3 is the active hormone, but the thyroid secretes it to a lesser degree. Now, fortunately, organs and tissues throughout the body can convert T4, which is not very active, into the active version, which is T3. So how do you control your thyroid function? Well, the thyroid is controlled by a gland in in uh, in the back of your brain called your pituitary gland. So the pituitary regulates the release of hormones throughout the body. Uh, There's an anterior and posterior pituitary gland. So the pituitary gland releases the amount of thyroid hormones in the blood by releasing something called thyroid stimulating hormone, which is abbreviated TSH. TSH tells your thyroid how much T4 and T3 to release. The thyroid gland produces just the right amount of T4 and T3 to keep the levels balanced as needed. Now, about 30 million people suffer with thyroid conditions, and by far the most common one is hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism is an underfunctioning of your thyroid gland. It's far more common than an overactive thyroid gland, which is called hyper thyroid. So hypo, under, hypo function of the thyroid, hypothyroidism occurs when your thyroid does not produce produce enough thyroid hormones. Uh, You'll see this in a blood test. The brain will release more, the parathyroid gland in the brain will release more TSH to try and push the thyroid to do its job. So you'll see your TSH levels go up and your thyroid hormone levels drop. Now hypothyroidism, it's pretty common, more common in women. It becomes more common with age. Hypothyroidism leads to a slow metabolism, weight gain, fatigue, brain fog, dry skin, changes in the menstrual cycle, high blood pressure, problems with the digestive tract like constipation and uh, irritable bowel, elevated cholesterol, heart inflammation, and so much more. Uh, There's so many symptoms. I'll just read you a couple of them. Uh, Problems concentrating. Uh, nervousness and anxiety, depression, forgetfulness, brain fatigue, an enlarged thyroid, you know, a swell, you'll see it in the neck, swelling in the neck called a goiter. Uh, people with uh, poor thyroid function, they lose their hair, their hair is brittle, their nails don't grow. They have a puffy face. Uh, they have all kinds of intestinal problems. They gain weight, they have fluid retention. Uh, their cholesterol goes up and the good cholesterol goes down. Uh, They have irregular menstrual cycles or heavy menstrual cycles, terrible fatigue, loss of energy, uh, very sensitive to being cold in the winter, uh, dry, itchy skin. I mean, this is just some of the symptoms of having low thyroid. 
Now, the role of thyroid and metabolism, some people think metabolism is simply how fast you burn calories. That's a very big oversimplification. It's not just how easily you gain or lose weight. Metabolism is every process involved with keeping you alive with all the chemical reactions that occur in your body every second. So there are nutrients for a better thyroid, nutrients for better thyroid function. Now, some people have hypothyroid, hypothyroidism. Now, some people have hypothyroidism or, or under function of the thyroid gland so severe that they need thyroid medication, they need thyroid hormone medication. And let me tell you a little bit about that since I am a pharmacist. Um, the most commonly used thyroid drug is Synthroid, which is T4, levothyroxine. It's probably the most commonly prescribed drug on planet Earth. And uh, people tend to get a little jittery with that. Their heart can race. They can lose bone. I find, in general, people do better with a natural prescription thyroid. In other words, they're getting the thyroid hormones from a natural source. They tend to lose more weight. They tend to have more energy. They don't feel jittery from it. Uh, but that's just, you know, a little side info there. Um, but, and, and I, always, I also tell people like this. If you have severe hypothyroidism, it's very bad for your health. So if you need thyroid hormone, um, I, I consider it like, like, like a pie. When you're getting... Uh, your, your your total daily output of thyroid hormone is like a whole baked pie. So all we're re doing is replacing a slice of the pie. Otherwise, you put too much stress on the body and the remaining healthy parts of the thyroid. It's not a good thing. It really isn't. That's one time when drugs are really super justified. The thing is, you want to kind of downplay it. You have to start, the doctor usually estimates a lower dosage than you actually need, and they increase it over time until they see that you're functioning well and all your blood tests have improved, etc. And you're not jittery and your heart's not racing. That's called tachycardia or tachyarrhythmia. So many people have hypothyroidism to the point where they may need thyroid drugs, but not everybody. And even if you need thyroid drugs, there are nutrients the rest of your thyroid, the remaining healthy parts of your thyroid relies on that should help your symptoms. So feeding your thyroid optimally with these nutrients, it can make a difference in your energy and your quality of life. The first one is iodine. Iodine is needed to create thyroid hormone. Uh, thyroid hormone is a combination of iodine and tyrosine. So T4 is four bundles. Uh, it's a chain of four molecules of iodine connected to tyrosine. And when it's activated in places like the liver or your muscles, they simply chop off one, one part of the chain and it becomes three molecules of iodine with tyrosine. That's T3, and that's more active. There's also T2, by the way, which is active in your muscles. Uh, the body converts T3 eventually to T2. Iodine deficiency is rare in the United States, but not getting enough, that's really common, especially in places like the Midwest, where you're far away from the sea and they're not eating shellfish and, and ocean fish like salmon. Uh, conventional lab blood levels do not always give a true iodine status. Now, iodine assists in the conversion of thyroid-stimulating hormone into T4 and T3. So thyroid doesn't work unless you have iodine. By the way, iodine probably has other physiological functions in our body. Research is showing that now. For example, it, it plays some role in our immune system's response to infection, but it also seems to be beneficial for women's breast health. Uh, for instance, uh, it seems to prevent fibrocystic breast disease and the growth of abnormal cells in the breast tissue. Now, sadly, there's a connection between thyroid cancer and breast cancer. Women with thyroid cancer are more prone to developing breast cancer, and women who have suffered with breast cancer have a heightened risk of developing thyroid cancer in the future. So could lack of iodine be part of this connection? I don't know. They haven't studied that. But there is a connection between uh, lack of iodine, poorly functioning uh, thyroid, and diseases of the breasts, and also thyroid cancer and breast cancer. So take care of your thyroid. Selenium. 
Selenium's a mineral. You only need a tiny amount. You don't need a lot. Oh, by the way, where do you get iodine? We should say that. You get iodine uh, from seaweed. Don't eat too much seaweed. It can overactivate your thyroid. Uh, codfish, like wild-caught codfish. Um, there's a little in plain yogurt. Iodized salt, obviously. Salt has it. Uh, shrimp. Um, uh, eggs. Tuna. Uh, but a multivitamin generally gives you sufficient amounts of iodine. So that's one way to play it really safe and make sure you have sufficient iodine. Simply taking a multivitamin. 150 micrograms of iodine uh, is you, all you need all day long. If you have a little bit more, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> selenium. You only need a tiny bit of selenium. Like 50 micrograms a day. 100 micrograms a day. So for your thyroid to do its job effectively, uh, T4, which is not very active, it's less biologically active, has to be converted into the active form, which is T3. Selenium is a must for this conversion. Without selenium, it doesn't work. Selenium has other activities in the body. Selenium protects the liver. Selenium is needed uh, to remove toxins from the body. It's part of the detoxification process. Uh, selenium is a, a powerful antioxidant, so it helps reduce inflammation and protect cells from free radicals that are generated by things like radiation and viruses and toxins and pollution, etc. Um, selenium is also needed for the health of the heart and the health of the eyes. But selenium is a must-have for your thyroid. But once again, don't overdo it. You don't need much selenium. Zinc! You know, we speak about zinc now in the time of the coronavirus because it's so essential for a normal immune system function. In addition to selenium, zinc plays a major role in activating thyroid hormone. So you can't convert T4 into the active form T3 unless you have zinc. So you need selenium, zinc, but you also need vitamin A, and that's also interesting with the thyroid. A typical source of vitamin A is the beta carotene in vegetables like sweet potatoes and yams and carrots. And that most people will convert that slowly and carefully in a controlled fashion into vitamin A. But people with thyroid disease cannot sufficiently convert beta carotene into vitamin A, which is weird because you require vitamin A to activate thyroid hormone. So it's like a double whammy. So people with thyroid disease actually need some active vitamin A. They can have beta carotene, but they need vitamin A. Um, and this is true for diabetics also. They have, a tr they have trouble converting uh, beta carotene into vitamin A. You don't need a lot of vitamin A. Uh, 1,500 units, 1,000 units, 3,000 units, that's plenty. Because vitamin A is involved in the production and secretion of your thyroid hormones. It assists in converting inactive T4 into the active form, which is T3. Now, don't get me wrong. T4 is not totally inactive, but T3 is much more functional for energy and metabolism, etc. Uh, but... Vitamin A also normalizes TSH, so your brain doesn't push your thyroid too hard. And it aids in iodine uptake by your thyroid, so it's very important. It's very important. Vitamin D, you know, once again, vitamin D, everybody's talking about for the immune system because of the coronavirus, and it really is required by the immune system, but it's also required for proper thyroid hormone function. Vitamin D deficiency is associated with a lot of autoimmune diseases and specifically autoimmune diseases where your own immune system attacks your thyroid gland, like Graves' disease and Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Conventional lab levels of vitamin D, they're not optimal. You really want like a, a level of 45 nanograms per, decil, mil, uh, nanograms per deciliter to 75. So you need vitamin D uh, for proper thyroid function. Iron! Iron is not just for protecting the brain and eyes, as neuroglobin, energizing your muscles, as myoglobin, or giving your body energy, as hemoglobin. It's also an antioxidant within catalase that protects you from the utilization of oxygen. There's always byproducts of the utilization of oxygen and calories for energy, something called hydrogen peroxide, and catalase breaks down hydrogen peroxide. So if, uh, iron is at the heart of catalase, a powerful antioxidant. Iron is also required by the immune system to kill germs, but iron is uh, needed uh, to prevent the formation of reverse T3. 
That's the inactive form of T3 that blocks T3 from working. You have a certain amount of reverse T3 in your body, but if it goes very high, like if you're stressed out, you create a lot more, and that blocks your thyroid hormone from functioning. So even though the doctor's blood test might detect sufficient levels of thyroid hormone in your blood, they can't get to where they're supposed to work, and you still have all the symptoms of a low-functioning thyroid. Now, given the highly active properties of T3, it has a short duration cycle. Um, your iron is really critical for supporting your thyroid function. So if you're deficient in iron, it really adversely affects your thyroid hormone metabolism because it lowers the level of T4 and T3, and it suppresses the enzyme that converts T4 to T3. So even if you have enough T4, you may not make it, be making T3 out of it. You're not making the metabolic step to make T3. You're going to become sluggish. So iron deficiency is related to hypothyroidism. Um, very important. Tyrosine, it's an amino acid. Um, it works uh, with iodine to make your thyroid hormones. So T4 is a chain of four molecules of tyrosine attached to iodine. T3 is a chain of three. T2 is a chain of two. Uh, so it, a tyrosine provides the structural foundation for thyroid hormones. And low levels of tyrosine is linked to a reduction in thyroid hormone and a reduction in thyroid function. And also a decrease in neurotransmitters like dopamine affecting your central nervous system. Um, I'll tell you something else. Um, here's a tip. If you have a terrible night's sleep, you could take some tyrosine in the morning. You'll, you'll feel like you had a good night's sleep. Now, it's not a, a substitute for sleep, I have to say that. <laughs> you can't say, well, I'll take a tyrosine so I don't, I don't need to sleep. But like if you stayed out late on Friday night and you have to work on Saturday or you have a big date Saturday night, take some tyrosine. You'll thank me for it. Um, When they give tyrosine in, uh, in clinical studies in patients with hypothyroidism, with low thyroid hormones in the blood, um, it really improved the, the, the level of thyroid hormone. It was improving their brain function and their nervous system function. It was reducing their stress levels. It really meant something. B-complex vitamins are also required because um, uh, B-complex vitamins are required for forming energy out of food. Uh, which makes your thyroid's job much easier. It takes a lot of stress off your thyroid. Uh, interestingly, there is some kind of connection between low thyroid function and a lack of B12. And when you lack B12, your brain doesn't work well and you can't create red blood cells, etc. So they all kind of work together. So a lot of these nutrients you can simply get from a multivitamin. You could get the, um, the vitamin A and the zinc and the selenium and the vitamin D and the B vitamins. You could get all of those, uh, and iodine. You could get all of those from your multivitamin. Tyrosine, you'd have to specifically take that as a separate molecule. Uh, but you get it when you eat protein. Protein is broken down to amino acids. One of them is L-tyrosine. So thank you for tuning in to the Invite Health Podcast. You can find all of our episodes for free wherever you listen to podcasts or by visiting invitehealth dot com forward slash podcast. Uh, please make sure you subscribe and please leave us a review. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Invite Health. I hope to see you next time on another episode of the Invite Health Podcast. Now, by the way, I don't know if I introduced myself. My name is Jerry Hickey. I'm a nutritional pharmacist and I'm the uh, chief scientific officer over here at Invite Health. And I want to thank you for listening. Have a good day. Thank you.